Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lab 207 podcast. We're going to hope for success this time because of the magic of editing. You don't know it, but this is probably the fourth time I've tried to do this video, so let's pray for good things. Anyway, we're in our series on macromolecules. Today's topic is going to be lipids, so let's go ahead and get on into it. I hope to make this quick today. As always, you got some objectives, and they are as follows. Explain why lipids are different from other macromolecules and... Compare and contrast the structures and functions of the three types of lipids. Now, like I said, this is going to be quick. Stick with me. So first of all, let's talk about what a lipid is. First, they are not considered to be true polymers. The reason for that is, as you'll see through this series, polymers are molecules that are made up of repeating subunits called monomers. Our lipids, they don't have a repeating subunit, so they aren't considered to be a true polymer. But they are considered to be macromolecules because they can all be grouped together based on a specific quality. They are all nonpolar and extremely hydrophobic. And I don't mean just a little bit. I mean like they don't like water at all. If you look at that picture on the right, You've seen oil and water before. When oil is put in water, it separates itself up and completely excludes all water. Oil is a lipid, so that's why they're all grouped together. And some examples, the three we're going to talk about today are fats, phospholipids, and steroids, but also included are waxes and some pigments. So let's get on into the specifics. First of all, let's talk about our fats just a little bit. A couple things that are notable about them. Um, fats are made of a fatty acid chain attached to a glycerol. So I've got my pen up here. Let's look at a little anatomy of our fat. Right here's the glycerol. Attached to this glycerol are three fatty acid chains. They are identical. They are hydrocarbons. They are all carbon and hydrogen. Now, you've probably heard of fats referred to as triglycerides before. That tri comes from these three chains that hang down. The technical name for a fat is a triacylglycerol. And that throws in this glycerol that's up here, but commonly they're known as triglycerides. They do have one section that is just slightly polar right here where these oxygens are, but for the most part, they are nonpolar. So let's get into something that you have probably heard about before. I'm sure that all of you at some point in your life have heard of unsaturated and saturated fats. Let's talk about the differences. It all comes down to double bonds. Unsaturated fats have them, saturated fats do not. So looking over here, this is an unsaturated fat. Glycerol, one fatty acid chain, second fatty acid chain. You see this third chain has got a double bond in it. That double bond simply means that there is space where you could still put hydrogens, but they're not there. Because of this hydrogen or lacking of a hydrogen, you get a tail that is kinked like this. That kinked tail makes all the difference in the way this thing behaves. Because of this kink tail, when you got a bunch of these molecules together and they start to cool off, they can't settle together into any nice stable structure. So at room temperature, unsaturated fats are liquids. A couple other things to know about unsaturated fats is that they come from plants and cold water fish. If you think of a cold water fish, if he had a fat in him that solidified at cold temperature, that would make swimming very difficult. So let's talk about a saturated fat for just a second. Saturated fats are termed or called saturated because they don't have any double bonds available in them. If you look, here's our saturated fat, here's our unsaturated fat. That kink is resulting from the double bond that's right there. This guy, no double bonds. Every single available space is filled up with a hydrogen. Now, the ways that this changes the behavior, because this chain is straight, saturated fats can stick together very nicely. They just stack on top of each other densely. Because they're able to stack like that at room temperature, our saturated fats are solid. You've all seen butter left out before. It just hangs out. It doesn't really do a whole lot. Generally, saturated fats are known as animal fats because they're found in high quantities in animals. Now, health-wise, unsaturated fats are much better for you than saturated fats for the following reason. Unsaturated fats don't stick together, so they are able to flow through your arteries much more cleanly, much more easily. Those saturated fats, they collect in your arteries and in your veins, and because of that ability to stack together, they form plaque, which is all this stuff right here. They just kind of stack together. They have a little party. Problem is, that makes the inside of your arteries smaller, which means that the blood has to work harder 
to get through there and ultimately that makes your uh, blood pressure higher and it makes your heart work harder. Now the food industry likes to hydrogenate fats. Plant fats, unsaturated fats, are very plentiful. They can get them from all over the place. But the problem is they're unstable. They're not shelf stable. They tend to go bad fairly quickly. Saturated fats don't go bad all that quickly. So what they do is they hydrogenate them, which basically means that they bombard them with hydrogens until hydrogens stick to those extra spots. When that happens, you get a saturated fat or a trans fat. Both of those are stable at room temperature. They last for a long time, but like we said, saturated fats aren't nearly as good for your health. The term for this sort of disease where plaque builds up in your arteries is atherosclerosis. It also leads to a hardening of your arteries. And another random thing to know about fat, fats is that they are a dense form of energy storage. They generally store twice as much energy per gram as carbs. Let's move on into our other two types of lipids. Phospholipids are really important to the living world. If you look at them structurally, they're just a little bit different, but this little difference makes all the difference in the world. So they've still got glycerol right there. Instead of having three fatty acid chains, they have two. And here's the important part, this phosphate that's hanging on up here. Now, the thing to know about this phosphate is that it is negatively charged. It's not nonpolar like these tails. The tails are still nonpolar. Because this guy is negatively charged, he can deal with water. He is hydrophilic. These guys, because they're still nonpolar, they're hydrophobic. They don't like water at all, not even a little bit. So this leads to a very interesting behavior. If you put phospholipids into water or an aqueous solution, they will self-assemble into a bilayer. And what that means is that they'll line up such that there are two layers. All of the tails, which are hydrophobic, will point to the inside where they are protected. And all of the heads, which are hydrophilic, will stick on the outside where they can be near to the water. Now, in terms of the living world, this is how a cell membrane is put together. Every one of your cells has a membrane around it. If you look at our little diagram here, you can see here's our little hydrophilic heads. They're assembled on the outside to where they can be near the water. Our hydrophobic tails are hanging out here on the inside where they're protected. And everybody is happy. Now, quick term to throw out there. Know that the term amphiphatic is used to describe molecules that have a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic end. So let's go ahead and wrap up with our final lipid. It is known as a steroid. Now I'm not just talking about like bodybuilding steroids here. I am talking about a molecule that your body actually uses very commonly. The thing that distinguishes steroids is that they have a carbon skeleton that's made of four fused rings. If you look at the three examples on the side there, you will see that they are all the same and that they've got four rings that are hooked together, and then they just vary by one or two groups. If you look, uh, and androstene, which is on the top there, has got an oxygen on top, testosterone's got an OH, est estradiol has got an OH. A um, couple important things about steroids for our lives, they're a component of the cell membrane, they stabilize all those phospholipids and help them interact in a manner that is beneficial. They are also used to make other steroids in the body. So, sorry, let me backtrack on that, cholesterol, is used to make other steroids in the body. So the cholesterol that we take in in our diets is actually used to make chemicals that your body is going to use on a regular basis. So it is good to have a little bit of cholesterol in your diet, but not too much at all. I hope all that was helpful. I hope you stuck with me. That is going to be the end of our quick little tutorial on lipids. So thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. We'll see you next time. Thank you.